All right, Bears fans, welcome back. Bear down and King Poles strikes again. He's cooking while the iron's hot. Two-year, $12 million deal for Gerald Everett, 29 years old. I didn't want them to sign him to a long-term contract because of his age, but I think this is a sweet spot when he's still producing. So here's the Bears' tight end room currently. We still have room for one more. I can see us still drafting, but this means we're not taking a premium pick draft. We're probably going to take some extra. we got to take some extra picks. I mean, that's just evident at this point. We have to get some extra picks somewhere. Obviously, you guys know I feel like we're moving down from one, getting at least four more picks from that, three this year, and pick someone up there. But this makes me think it's more of a developmental, probably a day three, early day three tight end. So probably Cade Stover's out of the mix for me unless he falls into the fourth round. Ben Sennett's still up for grabs. He might go higher than people are thinking, though. Maybe Jaheim Bell. Anyway, so we can look at that in a minute. But let's look at right now. Here's our tight end room. You can see the weakness there on the left. Robert Tunyon wasn't cutting the mustard for us. Uh, this is a signing that would put me right between the light green and the green color. You see Braxton Jones is light green. Still a great player, but not the perfect year. Uh, Cole Komet, green. Very, very solid tight end, obviously. But let's look at the metrics because Gerald Everett actually has a lot in common with Cole Komet. But Cole Komet has some strengths that Gerald Everett doesn't. But here is the two of them plus the top two tight ends in the league just so you compare. It's not really fair to compare them to them because these two guys are just in the league of their own. But Cole Komet is actually ascending every year. All right, so height, weight, Gerald Everett a little shorter uh, than Cole Komet, but solid, solid size. 95.6 passer rating when targeted. Drop rate of only 3.8%, so really solid. Contested catches of 27.3%. Uh, the receiving grade, which is P-R-E-C, that's the receiving grade, 68.1. So he's a solid receiver. Solid pass blocker, 67.5. Run blocking's a little bit weaker, but still decent, 51.3. His PFF grade is 65.6. And he was graded out as a 26 tight end this last year, which doesn't mean everything because Mercedes Lewis was in the top five. Uh, it's The PFF grades have their own different metric. But overall, very solid signing. Here is his sport track. It doesn't show the full breakdown of the two years yet, but two-year, $12 million deal, obviously a $6 million average. It shows his guarantee is $6.1 million. So I don't think this is going to be a front or back-loaded contract like the other ones. I think it's just straight across the board, so we're going to treat it that way. I give this an A grade. This is solid. As long as he's still producing at 29 years old uh, like he has been, I'm very, very happy with this signing. Good for you know a solid Tight end, two, 12 personnel sets are going to be no problem with Gerald Everett. I'm really happy about this. I give it a solid A grade. I think we could have got him a little cheaper, but when you look at the tight ends going off the board, when you see backups like Colby Parkinson that I thought we should try to get for $5 million, go for $7.5 million a year, $6 million a year for Gerald Everett is a very, very quality signing. So I'm very happy with this signing. I give it an A grade. Uh, here's our updated salary cap situation. That 58,893 does not include the Kevin Byard and the Gerald Everett. They don't have it updated yet because the contract details are not completely in there yet. So if we're going to just straight take straight across the line, that's seven and a half and six. So that's 13 and a half off of the 58. So that would leave us with roughly 45 even. 15 million plus or minus for rookie contracts. Right now it sits at 14, but when we trade down and acquire extra picks, it's going to cost about an extra million. So that leaves us at 30. Poles likes to use an eight to $10 million buffer going into the season. That leaves us with plus or minus 22 million left to spend. Still plenty of room for a quality, quality signing. No matter who that is, whether it's a center, Connor Williams, whether it's Chase Young, whether it's a different defensive end or defensive interior, 22 million is still a lot of room to work with. I am convinced Ryan Poles is working on one right now, but uh, someone's not wanting to take a discount or someone's not wanting to take a one-year deal like Chase Young. That's what I feel is happening right now. Chase Young doesn't want to take a one-year deal. He wants more guarantee. He's having to be convinced that he needs to have a prove it deal, so it might be waiting him out. I, nobody knows. I'm just speculating here with that. But here's the potentials in the draft still left. Uh, A.J. Barner wouldn't be a bad idea in the fourth round or fifth round. Tanner McLaughlin. One of these guys could be developmental. I don't see us taking those top three or four guys now with the day one or two pick just because Gerald Everett is such a solid tight end signing. But I don't know. If we get enough draft capital, absolutely. Take best player available. Take Cade Stover if he falls to the end of the third round. 
take Ben, ben Senate if he falls at the end of the third round. So lots of options still for the Bears, but we are going to have one more tight end of this room, and who knows, it could be a Mercedes Lewis one-year deal. He said he still wants to come back and play, and there's still uh, gas left in his tank, so he's not done, but we'll see what happens. But either, either way, overall, very, very quality signing for the Bears, getting Gerald Everett on a two-year, $12 million deal, a job for Ryan Poles. Let him keep cooking. All right, till next time, bear down.